Hello, today we're going to be discussing particle exchange and interactions. We're going to start by naming the four fundamental interactions which dominate all of nature. We're also going to be describing interactions using Feynman diagrams, and we're going to be trying to remember the four Feynman diagrams we're going to need to know for the exam. There are four fundamental forces which explain all of nature. The strong nuclear force we met in the last lesson. The strong nuclear force is experienced by a type of particle called a quark, which makes up a nucleon. There's also the weak nuclear force. The weak nuclear force we'll cover in greater detail today. It can be felt by any type of particle. We also have the electromagnetic force. That's the force responsible for attraction and repulsion between charged particles, and so it's felt by charged particles. Gravitation is the force which is felt by anything with mass. It primarily acts on a very large scale because it's a very, very weak force. OK, so the forces between particles are mediated by something called exchange particles. Some of these exchange particles are what we call virtual particles, meaning they cannot be directly detected. The exchange particle for the electromagnetic force, for example, is the virtual photon. An exchange particle mediates the force. This means that the exchange particle is passed between two other particles, which then experience the force. The other exchange particle we should be aware of is the W boson. The W boson is responsible for mediating the weak nuclear force. The W boson has a non-zero mass. It also has a very, very short range, about 0.001 femtometers. It can also be positively or negatively charged, which will be very important when we consider conservation laws later in the topic. Similarly, you should also be aware that the strong nuclear force is mediated by a particle called a gluon. For historical reasons, you may sometimes see this written as a pion. We also have a hypothetical particle which mediates gravity, called the graviton. This is yet to be detected directly. Here's a chance for you to have a go at a question. Pause the video and write an answer for each of these questions. I'll give you a second to do that, and then I'll give you the answers. And here are the answers to that last question. Next up, we have Feynman diagrams. Feynman diagrams are a convenient way to represent the interactions between particles. On a Feynman diagram, an arrow represents the path of a single particle. On the y-axis, we have time advancing, and on the x-axis, we have space. Generally speaking, however, these are not included when we draw our Feynman diagrams. Let's look at an example of a process we already know about, beta decay. Beta decay is one example of a process which can be represented with a Feynman diagram. Here's the Feynman diagram for beta decay. We start with a neutron. This neutron decays and changes into a proton. As it changes into a proton, it also releases the exchange particle, in this case, the W minus boson. This W minus boson then creates a beta minus particle, that is an electron, and an extra particle called an antineutrino. We've not met this antineutrino before, but we'll come back to it when we talk about conservation laws. There's another similar process to beta decay called beta plus decay. Instead, in beta plus decay, what happens is a proton changes into a neutron, releasing a positron and a neutrino. Here's the Feynman diagram for beta plus decay. Again, we start in the bottom left but this time with a proton. The proton decays into a neutron and a W plus boson. The W plus boson then itself decays into a beta plus particle that is a positron and a neutrino. You should know four different interactions like this for the exam. It's worth you memorizing these interactions so that you can state them quickly in the exam. These are beta plus and beta minus decay, electron capture, and electron-proton collisions. Although that sounds like a lot, several of these diagrams are very, very similar to each other. Here's the Feynman diagram for electron capture. With electron capture, we actually start with two particles, a proton and an electron. 
they interact through the weak interaction and we get a neutron and the emission of a neutrino. One important aspect to note is that the weak interaction with the W plus boson takes place from left to right. This is the opposite of what happens in electron proton collisions. In the electron proton collision, we have something very similar. We start again with a proton and electron, but the interaction takes place right to left. And instead of the W plus boson, we now have a W minus boson. These taken together are the four different Feynman diagrams that you should learn for the exam. Take some time now to pause the video and draw each of these Feynman diagrams in turn. Once you've done that, go back and see if you can redraw the Feynman diagrams without looking at them.